Hello fellow plot questers, today we have got The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. I have said, I have compared this book, The Republic and uh, Theoretical Republica Politicus, whatever the frick the net name is, uh, in a previous video. Today I'm going to review it fully, uh, with a focus on only The Prince, and it is possibly one of my favorite philosophy books of all time, and I'm going to explain why slowly but surely. And let's get right into it. So, here we go, let's get started. Machiavelli's prince is very focused on one principle. A monarch must always think of the good of the state first, and in order to forward the good of the state, ma the prince must do anything within his or her power in order to keep their power stable and their state better. Therefore, and a really good example of this is uh, Machiavelli states that you should do all cruel acts all at the same time and then be a benevolent king. Because he believes that if you're too nice, then people will start wanting to, you know, take you down. Because obviously there are a bunch of malevolent, evil people realistically in the world that would want to usurp a benevolent monarch by taking advantage of their kindness. And however, the same thing goes for a tyrant. Because if you're a tyrant and you're like super super scary and you're like off with the head every like 50 seconds, then obviously you're not going to be very popular by either the people, the nobles, or other powers within your country. So you're, you're going to, you know, France, French Revolution is going to happen to you. In other words, you need to find a good middle medium. And Machiavelli logically believes that the best medium is to do all the cruel acts at once to create a reputation for yourself. For, for example, let's say you're a uh, First hand man, your right hand man, decided to uh, create rebellion against you. Then you would find all the ringleaders, cut off their heads, and uh, put it on a pike and hang them outside your palace for uh, two months. And that would create a reputation of you as an absolutely, you take no jokes, if you try to rebel against me, I will kill you and your entire family. However, as long as you're a benevolent ruler after that, if you reward good things and not and give punishments to the bad, and you are very favorable towards people who actually follow you, then you will not only inspire loyalty, but you will have a fearsome reputation, but it would seem like you're keeping that reputation within. You're not letting the beast out. Instead, you are letting the people kind of be under you and you're taking care of them. And that creates a really good image. Stuff like this is really outlined in detail with examples within the content, within the text of the prince. And basically, it's a hand-to-hand -hand guidebook on how to become an effective, logically effective ruler. You have to be cold, calculating, and logical. You need to be free of childish feelings of morality or, or squeamishness when doing these things, because you, you, you're supposed to be you know, the king, the, the prince, the monarch. And the leader must be essentially a god. You must be untouchable. You must not show any weakness. You must be a completely invincible, godly, divine being so that no one will ever even think of trying to usurp you. And it's kind of like, almost like a, the book itself, it's kind of like a science report of, of politics. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, X, X plus Y, I'm chemical, H2O plus this equals this. Except it's instead of chemical experiments as used as evidence, he uses historical examples such as Rome or Alexander the Great as evidence and uses logic to bind them all together into one step-by-step, -step, very clean handbook on how to become a powerful monarch. And the historical context is that back then Italy was like super divided. I mean, this is, you know, the, the kind of the norm, the what everyone talks about, which is, you know, Italy was really divided, Machiavelli probably wanted someone to unite Italy to make Italy more powerful, and his take on that was the, the prince, which he gifted to a sovereign. And it's, it's a cool theory. There are other conspiracy theories like, oh, Machiavelli was actually really into democracy, and he was just putting out that book so that people were terrified of monarchy, so that people would go ahead and create a republic of Italy later on. Um, due to the influence of that book, which would be, you know, a 6,000 IQ play. I'm not sure if we're reading that deep into it, but again, that doesn't change that Machiavelli was a brilliant man. And I love the book because it's very logical and highly pragmatic. Of course, I'm not saying this on the found that, oh, it's absolutely morally awesome, because 
Well, it, it's really not morally upright, <laughs> and that's the main critique of the book. Oh, it's like written by a tyrant. It's a book to be tyrant. In fact, it was Joseph Stalin's favorite book, so um, that speaks for itself. However, just because bad people have read the book to do bad things, I mean, look at freaking Nietzsche, like, third Reiki, hello? Like, it, I believe that the book is a, a pragmatic, ultra-realistic representation of what being a cold, calculating monarch is like. And I believe Machiavelli's purpose was not to say, oh, you should become this, although here's a guidebook if you want to. It's kind of almost making us aware of how freaking disgusting politics is and also awakening us to the dangers of the world and reality because reality isn't as soft and benevolent as everyone thinks. In fact, it's harsh, cold, calculating, and devastating for many. And I believe that it, it is like a representation of them. And there's two animes that <laughs> really actually quote this book a lot or reference this book a lot. One of them is my all-time favorite, which is Code Geass. The main character, Lelouch, uh, follows Machiavellian um, philosophies all the way through the book and self-sacrifices himself at the end of the series. That was a major spoiler, by the way. And that is kind of like, you know, it's cool, like for, for a kid, for me. It was very cool to see that. And I, I wondered, hey, where does this like super cool philosophy thing come from? Where does it originate from? And guess what? It came from the prince. And that's how I first met this book. And uh, the other uh, fun little book that actually quotes Machiavelli directly is uh, The Realist Hero Rebuilds a Kingdom. And it's about this guy that gets freaking sent to, into another world, to a kingdom that's pretty much dying. And he goes ahead and he becomes a super powerful monarch to make his country better. And, I, and that's a really fun and interesting concept. But also he keeps using Machiavelli and it's like you can see why Machiavelli thought it would be effective because it kind of is. And I just thought, you know, that's really cool, like that realistic implementation. And I think it's very, very interesting. And it kind of sort of the little, little, little monster in my mind is like, hey, I really want to try out some of these tactics to, to see if they work. But again, I don't want to be a dictator or a king. I just want to be a chill dude living in a cabin writing books. So although this book kind of makes me feel like I want to be a king, it's really not. But again, Again, kind of referencing back to what I was talking about before, the book is almost like a warning towards the monarchs. Like, oh, if you do this, then you'll be screwed. And also, if you want to do this perfectly, then you better might as well do it. But the best kind of way to become a monarch is to just be a good king, be a good person. And that kind of undertone is actually present throughout this throughout the book. It's like, oh, you can be a tyrant, effectively, sure. But usually, according to these, these evidences, a tyrant gets screwed over, like they die, most of them anyway, like 99% of them do. But if you're a benevolent king, if you're just a good person, then usually, even if you do make some harsh and hard calls, which a king needs to make, you are remembered as a good king and no one tries to kill you. So that really, like, is kind of like the underlying message of the book, I believe. It's kind of trying to say that, I, hey, I mean, you've seen in history, tyrants sometimes work, but... I mean, logically speaking, it's just better, objectively, to be just a good king. And I believe that's the general underlying message of the book. Uh, warning against monarchy, uh, telling monarchs how they should be, which is just be a goddamn good person. And that's about it. And it's, my, it's one of my favorite books, favorite philosophy books ever, because it's just so logical and it's pragmatic. It's very step by step, very easy to understand and probably pretty easy to do if you're in that position of power. So. Hey, I thought it was interesting. Uh, a warning to the young impressionable people who have just heard about this. Don't try to do this in real life. It, that's not what it's meant for. Again, it's cool to fantasize about it or write a book about a character trying to do it and getting screwed over. <laughs> I've, I'm doing that kind of. Um, but again, you must remember that it's, it's kind of a representation of a flawed ideal, an ideal of ultra realism. And, like, a good example of that is, like, Attack on Titan's main character, Eren. He's meant to be a representation of an anti-hero, a bad guy. He's not a good guy, especially coming towards the final seasons. And although he's obviously war-traumatized and he has valid reasons for being it, it's more like an origin story for a villain rather than a hero fallen. Because all villains were heroes before they fell. 
And you gotta remember that, you know, it doesn't really justify the evil acts that Aaron is doing right now, which is, you know, killing hundreds of thousands of people, actually millions of people. And that applies to, that logic applies to Machiavelli's prints as well. It's effective, it's fun, it's, some of its principles you can apply, and there's an underlying message, which is raise awareness about bad things. You don't go up to a bad role model and go, hey, I want to be just like that. I want to be just like Aaron. I'm going to kill everyone. No, the author is trying to warn you to not be like that guy, to change, to move on. And that's the message. So while we're being aware of that, please remember that to the young, impressionable people. I am a young, impressionable person as well, but it, it's good to have some common sense. That's all I'm saying. That's about it. Um, obviously, there are some details in the book I didn't go through, but read the goddamn book. It's, it's well written. It's fun. Yeah. And you're looking into the eyes of a man who wrote a book about killing people. It's awesome. It's a great book. Anyways, have a great day, guys. I would highly recommend to the sociopath who are wanting to take over the world or want to be dictators or just any normal human being that wants a little warning for their humanity. Why not? Mm -hmm.